All right, so there's a few last things I need to touch up before we move on to the nice stone inside. Well, I guess it's all nice stone. I have two layers here that are on water, and I'm going to hide them because we're not doing water just yet. And you can see that I forgot that I have to do kind of the, the fascia of these pools uh, with the same material. So material, travertine, apply to selection, again, box map, bounding box, world, cap, and then we'll match it to this guy. And that's all we had to do. And now I can type show. Oh, my fingers are off. Show. There we go. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is to put the special textures on these three walls. I'm going to actually turn off the roof so we can see them easily. Um, this wall, this one's the red wall, and this one's the nice book matched green. Uh, this is probably one of the most iconic stone walls in the world. Um, so we'll start with this one, which is my least favorite. Uh, so again, we're going to make a custom material, create a standard. I'm going to rename it to stone underscore one. And in the file you've downloaded from my website, uh, you can go in and say we want a bitmap. And <clears throat> it's this one here, uh, the green. It's the one that looks a little more rocky. So we'll say OK. We'll preview it. There it is. Still on preview. And we're going to apply it to the selection. And you can see it's it's there it is. That's it's already looking pretty good. Uh, it's going to be pretty redundant now. We're going to do box mapping, bounding box, world, yes. And what that did now is lets me go one by one by one. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go. Oh man, I ruined it. There we go. We'll back up. Okay. So when I do the box mapping mapping on a bounding box, uh, it sets the dimensions of the mapping to the dimensions of the thing it is mapping. You know what? I think somewhere in here, maybe not. Oh, let's see. Show mapping. This little guy, and this is also available in Rhino 4. You can see that dotted line. That dotted line is the thing that's kind of, let's say, like like a shrink wrap. It's a, it's a thing that holds the the magical image that we're applying to the object, and that's what wraps around it. So now I'm going to hide it because we really don't care to see it. So there's wall number one. We're going to go on to wall number two. I'm going to right click, create a new material. It's a standard material. Uh, rename it. And this is. Uh, Let's see, stone two. And this one will be the red wall. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's right here. We'll apply that material. And, and remember, for this, I don't have to apply bump maps or transparency or glossy maps. That's just not important. These, these walls are perfectly finished and smooth. I suppose if I wanted to put a little reflection on them, I could. Um, but kind of the, the bare stone has been working really well for me. So put this guy on, and again, same thing as before. Let's apply a box map, bounding box, the world, cap it, and there it is. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look. Lona Pavilion Stone. Let's see if, uh, if we're being accurate here. I'm going to try to find. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I just went on Google Maps or Google Images just to see on what side did the stone align and it's the kind of the big splotches on the far right and our big splotches on the far right so we're we're looking good uh, the last and the best one is this third and final stone wall I'll right click create materials standard material we're going to rename it and call this one stone underscore three select the material bitmap and this is the longer one here. Say OK. We'll apply this to the selection. And again, you see it's a little messed up. Let's go. But if we go uh, box mapping, bounding box, world, yes, there it is. Uh, and perfectly book matched, tiled as it's supposed to be. You know, if, if we're really, we're kind of cheating because on the top it would never look like this. But I don't know anyone who's seen the top of the Mies stone wall. If you have, you've, you've carried a ladder there. I don't think for our principles it's, it's really going to matter that much. Um, so while we're doing this, why don't we go ahead and put in the water and the stone floor. Uh, I also need to make this that travertine. 
because I'm forgetting where that all goes. Apply to selection. Just like before, bounding box, world, yes. That looks good. And now I'm going to select water and just select these objects. So I have the one water there and one water there. Um, let's see. Water is again one I'm going to create custom. So just do my standard material. I'm going to rename it water and import a map. Uh, this map let's see where did I put this one I think I just downloaded it oh, and apparently I didn't leave it anywhere good that's my desktop that's my bronze that's my statue hmm maybe I put it in where I save the videos I think this is the water we'll see real quick yeah it is awesome so this is a water texture I just downloaded from online you can go to sites like vraymaterials.de or render textures there's tons of them or you can just search Google for water image this is all I needed so I'm gonna say this one uh, if I preview this it's it acts you know although it is water it's completely opaque we can't see through it so I'm gonna lower my transparency to 0.5 if we refresh this again um, oh sorry this isn't gonna do anything for me let's talk about that again real quick uh, uh, the transparency is set between a white and a black value. Black is completely opaque. White is completely see-through. Uh, if you look down here, black is 000, and white is, is 255. So somewhere in the middle, maybe around 125, should be halfway translucent. And there you go. You can see through it, but it's still... Uh, you know what? It lost too much of the texture, and I don't like that. So I'm going to jump this back up to maybe 185 apply it oh I went the wrong direction sorry let's go back down to maybe 65 we want it darker this is more opaque there we go and I'm happy with that so I'll right click and apply this to the selection because we're in the rendered view I can see it uh, these ripples are too big so with just this one surface selected I'm gonna apply uh, planar mapping again like we did for the, the the ground I'm gonna do a bounding box world uh, and then I can come in and edit it and say that I don't want it 866, I actually want it 400. Uh, maybe 400 is just the magic number all the way around. The the kind of the Y dimension here, I'm fine with. It was the X. Let's, let's just drop it down and see what 200 would look like. That's getting too repetitive. Because this, this is a seamless texture, uh, but our eye can easily see that the, the waves are redundant, and, and that doesn't work for me. So coming to this one, again, I'm not too happy with the... The proportion so I'll do planar mapping with the bounding box off the world and I'll drop this down to maybe 200 there we go that that works so now I need to get rid of the water and the underside the bottom of the pools is actually like a river stone um, so to do that again I have to make a custom material by right clicking going standard selecting a map selecting a bitmap then coming in and I think under 12 I save this one so here's just kind of a river stone I've got a diffuse and a displacement and a normal I don't want any of those I, I, all I need is the diffuse map for this so I can preview that there's some river stones with the bases selected now these I'm gonna apply oh I didn't rename it so we'll call this one river stone we'll apply that to the selection you can see they're huge, so much like before, we have to do planar mapping of the bounding box in the world. We're going to drop this down to 200. Now that's too repetitive, maybe 400 like the others. Make this 200. You know, I think that'll be fine. We can actually probably go even lower than that. We're not going to notice because there's going to be water on top of it, so we want something that's fairly realistic. This is just going to help the water read as a little more textured, and you'll see maybe a little depth, but honestly the water is going to be pretty reflective so we'll never see that far down into it uh... that's that's just too too much and i don't like looking at it so there we'll change it to that All right. Um, the best part of this model is the roof remains perfectly white uh, i'm going to be rendering everything from inside so i'm not too worried about these walls not being textured although this is pretty easy to do Let's see if there's anything else i'm missing I think we're doing oh the statue let's go do the statue 
So for the materials for the statue, let's zoom in. Um, it's just going to be kind of a bronzy metal. So let's start with a pre-made by right-clicking in loading material. We'll jump back out and go to metals. And let's see, I think probably a gold yellow mat would be a good place to start. It's a it's an old sculpture, so there's not you know a whole lot of detail to it. We're probably not gonna want something so goldish. Let's see if we can change that. We'll go to a darker brown. And maybe we have to change this to be a little more red. Well, you know what that that's that's pretty close. Um from the photographs I've seen, I haven't been able to be there in person yet, but that's that's pretty good color. I'm going to change this and try to get a little more into a red family. Right, we've got a peach color here. Let's see what that gives us. Apparently no noticeable change. My filter color is white, and that's one thing I know I do want to change. I do want it to come a, give me a dark reddish color tone. Let's see. This is pretty dark. There. That's actually pretty good. It's it's definitely a weathered aged material. So apply this to that selection. I'm also going to apply it here to the base. With this I'm going to again do... Um, let's think. I think I'm going to try a cylindrical map because I want the material to be evenly distributed. I would hate to see a bounding box and end up seeing a seam down the middle of this. Um, let's see, for a cylindrical map we want a vertical cylinder, yes. We want it to be solid so it does have a cap. Uh, and the base of the cylinder I have to actually put it here. Um, let's see, so trying to find if there's a way that I can snap. Nope, we'll just make it a little bigger than it needs to be. So this is the cylinder. It's going to be as tall as the model is. Cap it, yes. Um, so now, not that we can see that here, but the material should be evenly applied. For this guy down here, I'm going to say a cylindrical. Um, I'm just draw whatever. Yes. All right. Uh, the roof is done. Let's see if we can get a shot here. Um, I'm going to do a quick test render by right-clicking the the render icon and then drawing where I want to do the rendering and I'm hoping that just it's going to show me if it's too bright or too dark uh, and it's already rendering and it looks like it's too dark to me oh maybe not okay the model looks horrible that's I'm glad I did it because now we can change that material um, we'll set the reflection closer to white and the filter color back up towards white Alright, so maybe that'll be better. Again, we can right click and just do a small sliver. This way it's you know, speeding up our exercise. We don't have to waste our time rendering the whole scene. It's finishing the rendering now. I can bring in my render progress. Alright, just thinking about it. This must be a really difficult portion for the computer to understand. There we go. And now the model is kind of silver, which isn't right either. One last tweak. Uh, let's see if we can come in and look at the the amount of reflection here. 16. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Preview this. All right. Let's really make this kind of a dark red and see if that's going to help us. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go with this. I'm going to give it a shot, and in the next tutorial, we'll look at kind of adding to the scene uh, additional lights to help illuminate the interior. So there's the final rendering. You can see how lacking the interior is. We have this beautiful redstone wall, it's one of my favorites and it's uh... it's got nothing we have no light on the inside uh... so in the next tutorial we're going to look at adding some interior lights to to help bring that up to snuff um, and then we'll move into kind of more advanced reflection maps and uh... hdri lighting so look for that